Welcome to The Six Five. I'm Melody Brew, Vice President and Principal Analyst at More Insights and Strategy. Today, we're going to explore the fascinating world of AI and its impact on society. We're going to dive into a crucial topic, the role of women in the AI workforce. And the numbers paint a bit of a stark picture. It's projected AI is projected to add trillions to the global economy and millions of jobs by 2030, yet women currently hold only a fraction of those roles, and even fewer hold leadership positions. So this disparity demands our attention, and that's why we are thrilled to have Nicole Johnson join us today. Nicole is the Global Director of Social Impact and the President of the Cadence Giving Foundation, or Cadence. Um, she is really helping to lead the charge to empower women in AI through initiatives like the FemAI Alliance. Welcome, Nicole. Thank you, Mel. Thanks for having me. So glad to have you. And I loved being with you and so many other amazing speakers and guests and participants at the FemAI Summit. And I know that was just the beginning, just the kickoff. We talked about so many things there. And one of the things I think that really stuck out was that on one hand, there are, are tons of entry points of women and tech in tech and AI that we have to address. But then there's the place where there's the dropout. And I think that was a you know something that was really important that was talked about there. Where do you see women most dropping out of the pipeline? Yeah. Um, so as we've started to embark on understanding uh, this problem and where we can start to integrate in solutions, we've identified three leakage points where we see women most commonly drop out. The first is actually completing a STEM degree. So 45% of women who start college with a STEM major don't graduate as a STEM major, which is fascinating. Um, and so that first one is how do we keep women in school and in STEM majors? Um, the second is accessing a first job. Um, women have a harder time than men accessing that first job should they complete uh, a degree. Uh, and that becomes even more significant if there's intersectionality with being a first generation college student, with being BIPOC, with being LGBTQ plus. So, um, those can all contribute to, again, that first job access uh, that is so critical to kind of get you on your career trajectory. Um, and then the third is rising to leadership levels. So um, you mentioned uh, it, but I'll, I'll just give the statistic. Uh, right now in AI, we see women making up about 20% of the AI workforce and only about 10% of leadership. Um, so once women are in those roles, um, we actually see about 50% of women dropping out of the workforce before they hit 12 years in tech versus about 20% in other industries. So how do we keep them in the workforce? How do we keep them engaged? How do we keep them wanting to uh, rise to leadership levels so that other young women who are coming up can see role models um, and, and have that as an example of what a career trajectory can look like? Yeah, those are important points in all of those steps. How do you see AI differing from tech on a broader scale? Sure. Um, so to me, there's two, uh, two key things. So the first is where we are right now in time. Um, and so when we were kind of doing a landscape analysis of where can we make an impact as a uh, company that sits at the intersection of AI, um, as a foundation that's working on big problems. Um, and the AI workforce and the AI economy really uh, came to light because we weren't intentional um, about the internet revolution, right? The internet happened, nobody was thinking like, we've got to make sure, I mean, if you can remember back in the you know late 80s, early 90s, late 90s, I mean, nobody was thinking, who's in the workforce? Um, and so, we think that right now is a really key moment in time to start inserting some intentionality um, around this function. So that's one. Um, 
The second is when you look at the type of roles that we believe are going to be available in AI, it's actually um, roles that women are, and I don't want to like gender everyone, but but typically what we found is that women like to work on impact issues, big problems. Um, they they want to make an they want to make that impact with their career, um, and what where we see AI actually is um, kind of blossoming is bringing in liberal arts majors, bringing in subject matter experts. Um, so these are all places that um, we think that women can take really full advantage of, um, of being involved in this new AI workforce. Yeah, so it seems like that's not going to happen, just like you said, with the with the internet, you know, and technology in general. I remember it early in my career being like, oh, I'm the only woman in the company and sort of being okay with it and not really realizing that that's something that, you know, people need to pay attention to. How do you see kind of the interventions that can be taken to ensure that that's not okay, <laughs> you know, that, that we can ensure full participation? So um, this is where we really look to our nonprofit partners um, as the experts in this in this specific areas they work uh, they work on, and so uh, we've partnered with uh, s- seven organizations to date um, that are on the ground doing this work with women every day, um, ensuring that uh, women again like addressing those three leakage points of ensuring women stay in school. Uh, I'll give you an example. Last Mile Education Fund is one of our um, one of our partners that works on this. They uh, they do emergency grants um, for mm-hmm. for people, um, but it is really skewed towards women um, in mm-hmm. their numbers uh, that are within four semesters of graduating with a CS or EE major that need emergency loans to make it through, mm-hmm. um, and it is shocking. Uh, the number, the dollar amount that these women need, um, it is usually thirteen hundred dollars or less, um, mm-hmm. and that actually keeps them in school and gets them to yeah. graduate. And so, I mean, it's it's those kinds of partnerships um, that we have been fostering and working on uh, to really ensure that these this on the ground these on the ground solutions are being implemented. Those partnerships are so important, and you also have a bunch of corporate partnerships as well as part of your Fem AI Alliance. Yeah. So let's talk about the Alliance and then also some of the very impressive and very exciting partnerships that were just announced. Sure. Um, so when we started embarking on this um, and you know you were uh, generous with your time to attend our summit, thank you. Um, but when we started embarking on this, we recognized that this is not a problem we could solve on our own. Um, And we really needed to bring industry together um, to work on this uh, issue in congruently. So um, so we launched an alliance um, and we've had some really impressive partners already sign up. So uh, to date, we have NVIDIA, we have Workday, we have NetApp, uh, we have Equinix, we have um, breaking news to you that um, we haven't even announced yet. We have Vodafone um, and we have Unity Technologies. So we are, we're moving quickly. Um, and it, it, I think what's been interesting about that is seeing how many companies are excited about addressing this issue um, and want to. And so our plan for this alliance is um, to bring them together with, again, some of the stakeholders out in the community. Um, We are not under the impression that we can solve everything. And so, again, we look towards those partnerships, um, whether it's with nonprofits, whether it's with universities, whether it's with um, scholarships, whatever that partnership looks like um, that best fits those leakage points. we're going to work in collaboration with those experts on how to ensure that, again, women are are um, not not dropping out along those leakage points. I love that we have like some breaking news here too. That was a, <laughs> that was a, a nice <laughs> nice surprise. And Cadence started this out with a twenty million dollar 
funding. And so that's, I mean, that in itself is super impressive. So I, I just want to close this out with, I mean, one of what will give you kind of a, an opportunity to sort of share any of your last thoughts, but I think from, you know, kind of a, a broad outlook perspective, your job, you know, you have a huge job in terms of being in charge of corporate responsibility and all of that. And that feels to me like it must be like a huge honor, but also in a way, I don't want to say a burden, but it's like that must weigh really heavy on you at times to like be like, there there are so many problems to solve. Yeah. And I look at what Cadence does in so many different ways. Um, you know, the $50 million um, investment in the racial equity fund and other initiatives. And I think you're, you're so fortunate to be a part of that, but also it, it, that's a lot to like, you know, sort of t- to take on and to have those partners join you and everything is, it must be great. How do you kind of function daily, just sort of like deciding, like, what do I invest in? What do we do? Because you guys do a lot, yeah. but there are a lot of things to do. There are a lot of things to do. Um, so it, you know, to be perfectly candid, there are days where you're like, oh my gosh, I've been doing this. I mean, I've been working in this space or the nonprofit space for all of my career. Um, and yeah. sometimes it can feel like, have I, have, has anything changed? Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, I'll give, again, I'm going to call out Last Mile Education Fund um, as, a, you know, just because they were kind enough to bring one of their students that had um, been impacted by their funding um, to an event that we had recently. And she is a junior at Stanford. She just transferred to Stanford from Houston Community College. Um, And it was that grant that she got from Last Mile Education Fund that allowed her to finish her community college um, courses and get into Stanford. And she's a junior in computer science. Like, I mean, there is impact. and you know, I will also say I have I have an amazing team. First of all, um, they are completely committed to this work as well, um, as well as our board. So um, our Cadence Giving Foundation board includes our CEO, our CFO, our CHRO, um, and uh, many others. And so you know, they're passionate about it. So I, I don't feel like I'm going at it alone. Um, I will say one of the things that keeps me sane is I, I also have a kind of group of social impact leaders uh, from other tech companies that I talk to on a regular basis. In fact, I'm going to do yoga with several of them tonight. Um, and oh, so that yes. network um, and those relationships can really help keep you um, grounded and sane when you're dealing with all of the things that are coming at you. I'm sure that helps too. I think this this is something also that I've I've seen Cadence do is really not just do the things as Cadence is doing this, but also say, hey, I want you to join us. I want this company to join us and really kind of try to set this as more of a movement, not just Cadence is doing this and you know that's it, but really bring people in to do that, which is awesome. Um, is there anything that we didn't cover that you want to share either about the Alliance or I mean, one definitely would love for you to share kind of how people can get involved, where to go to get more information, um, yeah. but anything else. Yeah. Um, so we do have a website. Um, it's fem.ai. Uh, and there is information there on either joining the Alliance, on learning more um, about um, women in AI. Uh, we do plan on updating that page with um, with opportunities for trainings and other things that other things that women can take advantage of. So um, that is a work in progress, um, but there is some great stuff there right now. And, you know, I would also say, you know, I would just really encourage women to look at this space that's developing right now, look at this economy, look at this workforce and think about ways that they might be able to fit into it. I, I again, I, I see this as a huge opportunity space for women. Um, and I, I want them to be t- able to take advantage of it because I, you know, in, in my thinking is when, when women are successful, the whole, you know, workforce, the, everything lifts up, the economy lifts up, families lift up. Um, and so, you know, it, it is, it is an opportunity space. And so 
take advantage. That's great. Super inspiring. And thank you for all your work and Cadence for all the work that you all do. It really is truly inspiring. And I'm, I'm so happy to have been a part of the summit and been able to kind of see all of the work that you do. Thank you for joining us today on the 6-5. And we look forward to seeing all of the goodness that the FEMAI initiative continues to do and all of the partners who join along with you. And thank you for joining us, everybody who's watching. And again, you can go to the FEMAI, FEMAI website to get more information and hopefully join along. Thanks for joining us. And we will see you next time on the 6-5. Thanks, Mel.